Hi, I'm Kendrick Johnson with TheMedSchool.com. I'm a third-year medical student at Toro University, Nevada. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about endocarditis. We're going to briefly cover the uh, presentation, the uh, diagnosis, and the treatment of uh, infective endocarditis. So the classic presentation of endocarditis includes uh, these immunologic manifestations where uh, we have uh, small emboli that are uh, causing different problems around the body. So if you can picture vegetations on the heart valves kind of breaking off and uh, causing small areas of ischemia or, or areas of abscess. So splinter hemorrhages like you see in this uh, picture of the fingernail um, are just, just small hemorrhages in the fingernails. Osler's nodes and Janeway lesions are similar, but as uh, the node uh, implies, Osler's nodes are uh, raised and generally pain felt, painful, whereas Janeway lesions are not. So this picture here is supposed to be of Osler's nodes, but I think uh, you could make an argument that, that those might be Janeway lesions. Um, Roth spots are just a similar phenomenon except they happen on the retina. So you're doing an eye exam and you see some small hemorrhages on the retina. And then the more concerning findings are when the septic emboli go to the brain, the kidney, uh, the spleen. Uh, one of my patients had multiple uh, emboli to his small bowel and had uh, small bowel infarcts and had to have a lot of his bowel resected. Um, emboli to the brain, of course, can cause uh, stroke. Uh, emboli to the kidney, obviously kidney damage. So uh, these are some pretty concerning findings. Uh, you can also end up with uh, pulmonary embolism from these emboli. And we'll talk a little bit later about what that uh, means to our treatment. So we have some criteria for uh, the diagnosis of uh, infective endocarditis. So if you have a positive blood culture with uh, a common endocarditis organism plus an echocardiogram uh, that's positive for vegetations, then you've got a diagnosis. That's two major criteria. If you only have one of those major criteria, then you need one of these minor criteria, which include presence of a predisposing condition, which uh, might include rheumatic fever, um, or it could uh, be some other valvular disease. Um, a fever is another minor criteria. Embolic disease is another criteria. Uh, immunologic phenomena. Um, like the raw spots or Osler's nodes we showed, and uh, just any positive blood culture uh, or a blood culture with a, a rare organism. So if you only have one major criteria, then you need three of these minor criteria. So you might have uh, positive blood culture, you have uh, embolic disease, fever, and uh, some of these raw spots, but um, you can't... Uh, you can't make a positive echocardiogram. So um, that would be enough to call it uh, infective endocarditis. Or if you have all five of the minor criteria, that works too. So you don't have positive uh, blood cultures for common organisms or a positive echocardiogram, but you have all these other things we listed. Um, actually, before I go on, one of the reasons why this is important, the reason that we need these Duke criteria is because uh, it's going to make a difference in treatment. Um, so keep this in mind when we get to the treatment page. So we think about uh, drug users and rheumatic fever uh, as the main populations that get infective endocarditis. They're, of course, not the only populations that get it, but uh, they are some of the most common. Rheumatic fever is uh, declining in the population, so we're going to be seeing less of that, especially as uh, we get into practice later on. But uh, the drug users, I'm sure, we will keep seeing. And uh, the major 
organisms that you see are staph aureus, which uh, you're going to get from the skin, obviously. Um, strep viridans, which you get from the mouth. Um, and other strep species, uh, many of them from the skin, as well as enterococcus. If you uh, have no positive blood cultures, but uh, uh, all of our other uh, Duke criteria suggests we have a endocarditis, then we want to start looking at the hassock organisms. These are the ones that we don't uh, that don't show up regularly on a culture. They're hard to culture for. So, uh, Haemophilus parainfluenza, Actinobacillus, Cardiobacterium, Echinella, and Kingula kingae. So, Echinella and Kingula kingae. Uh, both are associated with bites, so uh, if if you've been bitten by somebody and think you have endocarditis, please tell your doctor to uh, order uh, workup for HASIC. The um, drug users that get this, um, we have Staph aureus, um, we, we ought to uh, list uh, Staph epidermidis here. Um, those uh, those are going to go most likely to the tricuspid valve. Whereas um, if we have somebody w who had a previous rheumatic fever, they are most likely going to have a damaged mitral valve. So on the right side of the heart, we're going to be thinking about drug users. On the left side, we're going to be thinking more about rheumatic fever. Um, there's also... Uh, non-bacterial endocarditis, so that includes lupus and cancer and, and some others, uh, including foreign bodies. But uh, the, they have a little bit different appearance, at least on uh, on autopsy. Uh, I don't know if you can tell the difference on, a, on an echo or not. But uh, lupus causes uh, the Liebman Sachs endocarditis. And cancer, um, you can have uh, metastasis that, that uh, goes to the valves. And uh, that can be a scary one, too, because it throws off uh, metastatic emboli all through the body. So we mentioned that it was important to know if this was uh, endocarditis or not. So we have a p positive blood culture, and we're trying to know if this is endocarditis or just a... Uh, just a blood infection. And that makes a difference in how long we're going to treat it. So if we do meet the Duke criteria, then we're going to do four to six weeks of antibiotics. If we don't know what the organism is, we're going to do vancomycin plus ceftriaxone or vancomycin plus gentamicin. And uh, if you have a, a kidney patient, uh, substitute daptomycin for vancomycin. In, uh, in what I've seen, uh, in my limited experience, the uh, vancomycin often uh, precipitates a kidney problem uh, pretty quickly. And so uh, most of the patients that I've seen with infective endocarditis were, endocarditis were switched from vanco to dapto after their kidneys went out. Of course, uh, we can also get the sensitivities back and, and treat based on the sensitivities. So we're going to be causing some serious damage to these valves the longer we let the uh, organisms grow on them. But uh, you also don't want to go in and do surgery if somebody's got an infection. You don't want to do surgery on an infected area and uh, let that spread uh, everywhere else that you might be, uh, might be putting your hands. So there are some criteria that are used to decide whether or not you'll do surgery on them. Um, these are these were given to me by uh, an infectious disease doctor, and uh, it sounds like it sounds like uh, surgeons have a little bit different criteria, but but uh, for according to, to infectious disease in general, if you're given an appropriate uh, therapy and the uh, endocarditis is not improving over a, a four to six weeks uh, treatment, then uh, that's a good time to go in and cut it out. 
if the patient is in heart failure because of their valvular disease caused by the endocarditis, then you've got to go in and repair the valve. And if they're throwing off multiple septic emboli, then um, then you'll want to go in and and uh, cut it out so we don't get strokes and uh, ischemic valves and etc. And uh, I think the surgeons would, in many cases, add on one more criteria that if you have a a big enough goober, as I've heard them call it. Um, on the valve, then you go in and cut it out. I don't know. I don't know how uh, how big it has to be in order for them to go in and cut it out. But I think they. I've heard that if it's over uh, over five millimeters or over ten millimeters, they'll go in and, and do surgery. So the images that I used here were from uh, from Wikimedia Commons. So they have a, a, a Creative Commons license on it. If you need to use them for something else. And please uh, get, uh, send me some comments uh, on the videos so I know how to make them better. I appreciate everybody who's been watching them. But please let me know if there's important information I'm leaving off or uh, if I've uh, made some errors. And we'll try and make these videos better in the future. Thank you.